Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. This is Marta's Sci-Fi Seminar. And we are on, let me check my notes. It's been that kind of week. Uh, drafting video number 12 of 13. There's only gonna be one more of these uh, videos on drafting your first novel. Uh, the videos have been out approximately every two weeks. There will be a very short interval between this one and the final uh, video of this part of the series. Um, but if you've been watching the videos on your own approximately every two weeks or subscribing and following along that way, then you may be as far as 55,000 words. You're almost there. You can see the finish line. Yay! It's all very exciting. If it looks like your draft is going to go more than 60,000 words and you're worried about me jumping ahead to the editing stuff, never fear. After these last two drafting videos, 12 and 13, I am going to spend the entire month of November doing very short daily videos to help you through NaNoWriMo. For any of those, for any of, those of you who are watching who have not taken the six month route to novel writing, but intend to take the 30 day route to novel writing. Um, even those of you that have been watching and following along and doing this for the last few months, uh, I hope that you will all enjoy the NaNoWriMo videos as they will be a sprinkling of writing advice, updates on my work in progress, um, nice big chewy quotes out of some of the things that I have reviewed this last few months. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. I will be doing short daily videos on this and on uh, the sibling channel, uh, Marta's Magical Mystery Class. So if you need more time for your draft, by all means, take it. Uh, but tune in and join us for NaNoWriMo fun. Then we will all catch up together in December, and I will start several months of videos on revising and editing your manuscript. So woohoo hoo, um, it's gonna be all kinds of fun. So today, um, we've been talking about elements of fiction and other literary terms. Uh, the literary terms I'm gonna talk to you about today are imagery and imagistic language. And there's a, you can argue there's a difference there. Um, I'll get into that here in a minute. Um, a good basic working definition of imagery is that it's language that appeals to our senses, okay? Classically, we have five senses, uh, sight, sound, smell, taste, and touch. Uh, our language, English, is loaded with words that connect to the senses. We use them every day. We don't even think about it. We say things like, this is hot, it's cool, this is so yum. Hot and cool are both words that reference tactile sensations. Yum refers to taste stuff. So I think we get this idea that imagery and imagistic language is only for poets and people doing fancy literary work. Mm -mm, it's not. Our language is loaded with it. Your manuscript, if you've gotten to 55,000 words, is already full of imagery and imagistic language. And here's where I'm gonna split that hair a little bit. Technically, in literary circles, when we talk about imagery, we're often talking about figurative, uh, how to define a word without using other words that are hard to define. We're often talking about language that uses comparisons between things to describe what's happening uh, in, the, in, the, in the current work. Um, we have two very specific comparisons that we call out. Uh, one is a simile, one is a metaphor. Uh, simile is a kind of comparison that uses like or as. A metaphor is a more direct comparison that does not use like or as. Um, a simile would be something like fast as a jet, bright as a star. A metaphor 
is going to be maybe less obvious. I mean, you, you get things like, my heart is a bloom that shoots up through the stony ground. Um, you, and I have a teen interruption at the door. Um, I do not know either. Mm. So, um, hey YouTube, this is what happens when you shoot in your basement. Um, so a simile uses like or as, a metaphor is more direct and does not use like or as, you know. My heart is a bird, my heart is a thorn. Uh, my pain is a wall between us. Those are all metaphors. Um, I am actually going to give you a good simile uh, out of a book I will be reviewing here in a minute. Um, this takes place in a furniture store. And... You've been in those big furniture stores, right? Where there's a room that's like this, and then you go in and there's a room that's like that. So here is the quote. The showrooms sat next to each other uneasily, like habitats in a hyper-condensed zoo. Okay. So this is also a good way we can talk about imagery. If imagery is these comparisons, um, similes, metaphors, then what is imagistic language? Imagistic language would be any other language that appeals to our senses, any other kinds of descriptions. Certainly saying the showroom sat next to each other uneasily um, doesn't necessarily call forth a metaphor, it's not a simile, it doesn't call forth a comparison, but it certainly gives us uh, a vivid picture of how these showrooms are situated within the furniture store. Okay, so that's imagery, imagistic language, um, descriptive, descriptive language apart from those kinds of uh, comparisons that would be imagistic language. Um, and then we get right into the review. That little bit that I just read you is out of Nino Cipri's novella Finna, which is all about what happens when wormholes open in furniture stores and uh, how you too can be prepared for this kind of emergency should you happen to be a big box furniture store employee and need to use a Finna. This is the device one uses to find someone who has been sucked into a wormhole um, in a furniture store. It was a really fun read. Uh, so I highly recommend for all of your wormhole uh, preparation, furniture store wormhole preparation needs, please read Nino Cipri's Finna. Um, and in the meantime, keep reading keep writing. I will be back soon, soon, soon uh, to talk to you more about finishing the drafting process um, next time. Bye-bye, folks.